One of the most notorious pirates of all time was Blackbeard, or Edward Thatch. He operated around the West Indies and the east coast of Britain's North American colonies, and he was seen as a feared threat to the ships around that area. Blackbeard was an intelligent leader who carved a fearsome reputation and image for himself, and he was a skilled naval tactician. But in one final battle, he was defeated as British sailors stormed his ship and Blackbeard was then killed in the following melee and battle. But following his death, his body was then subjected to a posthumous execution, which was brutal and terrifying in its manner. This was done to show many people that the infamous Blackbeard was dead, and a reward was collected for his death. But what is the story of the horrific execution of Blackbeard? And remember to support our channel, as always, please make sure to subscribe. Little is known about Edward Thatch or Blackbeard's early life. He used the name Blackbeard whilst engaging in acts of piracy, and there has been some debate as to what his true name was. It's believed that he was a privateer for the British during the War of the Spanish Succession, but around the year 1716, his reputation of being a pirate continued to spread. The following year, he converted a captured French merchantman ship into a 40-gun warship, which he named the Queen Anne's Revenge. This ship then became involved in a number of raids on other vessels and ships around the Virginia and Carolina coasts, and inside of the Caribbean Sea. Interestingly, the remains of the Queen Anne's Revenge were found offshore of Atlantic Beach in North Carolina, and it was identified by a number of coins found with it, bearing the bust of Queen Anne and her successor King George I. The ship had a crew of around 300, and in 1718, Blackbeard scuttled the ship, and moved his crew onto a smaller vessel, named the Adventure. He was a fearsome character, and had a daunting appearance. His large black beard reached his waist, and he was a crazy man. He often lit fires and fuses in his long hair, to make him seem crazy and frightening, but he had a reputation, even within his own men and crew, of torturing prisoners, and sometimes turning on his own crew at any time. Despite this, he managed to maintain order, and this added to his terrifying character, and his enemies were feared of him. His flag showed a skeleton stabbing a heart with a spear and toasting the devil with a glass in the other hand, showing that Blackbeard had an alliance with the devil, and this flag would strike fear into any vessels who encountered it, as they knew it was Blackbeard. He continued his acts of piracy around the coasts of America, and he formed a base at Ocracoke Island just off North Carolina. But one of the most shocking and brave things he did was to use his flotilla of ships to blockade the port of Charlestown in South Carolina. Over a week, nine ships were stopped and were attacked and plundered as they attempted to sail out of the harbour where Blackbeard's fleet was anchored. Blackbeard told some of the prisoners that the fleet needed medical supplies, and if none were given, then all the prisoners would be beheaded and their ships would then be torched and burned. However, when two pirates and a prisoner were sent into the town, they did not return. This left Blackbeard with no choice but to sail eight ships into the harbour, and this caused chaos. The pirates ransacked the town, causing panic, and they looted what they could, and shortly after this his supplies were delivered, and the local government gave in to his demands. He then released the prisoners, but had robbed them of all their possessions. The siege of Charlestown led to Blackbeard's reputation spreading further, and he was seen as a fierce leader, who would come inland and take whatever he wanted when he needed to. The news of this attack led to him becoming one of the most feared pirates in history. However, he may have become too bold and brave in his actions, as he angered the governor of Virginia, Alexander Spotswood. Spotswood then gathered together a group of private pirate hunters, who were tasked with taking out Blackbeard and his crew, and they were paid to hunt him. The main pirate hunting ships were told to sort out the problem with Blackbeard, and to also overpower his crew and forces. The main ships used to hunt him were the HMS Pearl and HMS Lime, who were commanded by Lieutenant Robert Maynard. Maynard found the pirates anchored near to Ocracoke Island, but he waited until the following morning to attack, as it was in unfamiliar waters. He stopped all traffic going near them, and had lookouts track Blackbeard's men to make sure they could not escape out to sea. Blackbeard at the time was entertaining guests on the island, and did not have a lookout. When Blackbeard spotted them, he quickly cut the anchor, and then began to attack the ships with his cannons. Within minutes, he had taken out a third of the attacking forces. The broadside shots caused Maynard to lose a third of his men, 
Around 20 on the Jane were either wounded or killed, and 9 on the Ranger were killed. The second and third officers were killed or injured, but what happened next is debated. Small arms fire from Jane may have cut Blackbeard's adventurous jib sheet, in which she lost control and then ran into a sandbank. But then Maynard saw the gap closing between the vessels, and Blackbeard ordered his men to be ready for boarding. Several grenades were thrown, and as the smoke cleared, Blackbeard led his men aboard, and they noticed the enemy's ship was empty. But then the rest of Maynard's men burst from the hold, firing weapons and shouting. This surprised Blackbeard and took his crew by surprise also, and the pirates were shocked by the assault. Blackbeard then rallied his men quickly, and then he and Maynard were in an intense battle, and they shot their flintlock pistols at each other, and then threw them away. Blackbeard then drew out his cutlass, and he managed to break Maynard's sword in half. But the pirates were then pushed back towards the bow of the ship, and then the Jane's crew surrounded Maynard and Blackbeard. But as Blackbeard went in to attack Maynard whilst he was reloading, he was slashed across the neck by one of Maynard's soldiers. He was badly wounded, and then was attacked by others, and he was killed, with his crew then quickly surrendering. Those on the ship were captured, but what happened next to Blackbeard's body and remains was truly shocking. His body was examined, and it had been shot five times, and had been cut about twenty times by different swords and weapons. But then Maynard had Blackbeard's head struck from his body, and he was posthumously executed, with Blackbeard's head being cut straight off. His head was then tied to the bow spirit of Maynard's ship, and his corpse was then thrown into the inlet and the water around them. His head was struck off to show people that the infamous pirate was killed, and for Maynard to then take the reward that he had been offered. The sight of Blackbeard's head would have been shocking when it came into port. When they returned to Virginia, the head was then placed on a spike or a pole at the entrance to Chesapeake Bay to serve as a strong warning to other pirates and ships with attacking intent, and it was there for a number of years before it decayed in the elements. Many of Blackbeard's crew were also executed and were hanged, but Blackbeard became one of the most feared pirates of all time, and his actions inspired many to write books about piracy. He was not the most successful pirate of all time, despite his reputation and infamy, but he was a man who struck fear into the hearts of sailors and traders all around the Americas. But his posthumous execution was a brutal one, and would have been a terrifying sight to have seen. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.